What's going on guys? Welcome to part two of a detailed look at my setup. In this video, I'm gonna be going over the microphones I use, as well as my digital audio workstation and the cameras that I use, and basically anything I kind of missed in the first video. As well, if you haven't seen that first video, just click on this link over here. In that video, I go over the pedals that I use on my pedal board, as well as the guitar. Anyway, let's get started with this video. Uh, first off is my main vocal microphone. So my main vocal mic is a Neumann TLM 103. Neumann is a company that's known for making great sounding microphones and this one is no exception. The only problem is with Neumann is that because of its quality, there is a price that comes along with that. This microphone I do believe runs about $1,300 to $1,400 Canadian new. I did not pay this because I actually didn't buy this mic. This is actually my dad's mic that I've kind of borrowed for the inevitable future until I'm able to purchase my own microphone. But if you are looking for a vocal mic, uh, what I suggest that you do is research, find out, you know, what are some good names and some uh, good makes of microphones, and then go into a local music store or into a local studio that's willing to allow you to try out some microphones because even though this is an expensive microphone, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be the best microphone for you. Everybody's voice is different, uh, every microphone sounds different. You could buy the most expensive microphone out there, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be the best sounding microphone for your voice. Again, if you're looking for a vocal mic, this is a great sounding one, but go out there, uh, test some microphones out, and see what ones sound best for your voice. The microphone that's hooked up to my loop pedal is a Sennheiser E835. It's a dynamic cardioid pattern microphone. I've compared this microphone to the SM58. That's kind of where what I A-beat it with. You guys may know the Shure SM58 as pretty much the industry standard microphone. Everybody uses it live. It's known as an extremely durable microphone. They've got videos of people dropping out of helicopters and shooting it with a shotgun and it still works. I don't plan on shooting this thing with a shotgun. I've never actually tested that out with this guy either, but so far it hasn't let me down. It sounded a lot clearer, to me at least, than the SM58, and I do believe that this is a little bit cheaper as well. And I'm seeing these mics more and more on live stages. So take a look at this guy. It's a Sennheiser E835. It's a great sounding live vocal microphone. So I have three cameras that I use when I film these covers. The first one is a Canon T3. This is actually my girlfriend's camera, and so it was kind of like an extra camera that I could use for free. That's why I use this one. The other one that's filming me actually right now is the Canon T3i. I wanted something that I would be able to take good photos with as well as take video. That's kind of why I ended up looking at DSLRs, and I ended up getting a really good deal on this camera. So that's why I ended up going with the uh, Canon T3i. And the last camera I use is a Kodak PlaySport. Again, this is another uh, camera that I kind of just fell into. Uh, I was working at an electronics store at the time, and this camera, for whatever reason, kept coming back uh, with complaints that it wouldn't charge. You would have to have this thing plugged in at all times, uh, which is not good because that's not the purpose of this camera. You want to go out there and you know you can film things underwater and you can do all that stuff with it. It kept coming back. Uh, it was beyond warranty, so they did take it back, but I ended up getting it for free. Yeah, it's worked perfect ever since the, camera, the battery charges and everything. So I don't know what was going on with it before, but it works fine now. Uh, which was sweet, but I used this guy to film the pedals because in all honesty, it doesn't take the best video. Uh, it's more of kind of a gimmicky camera um, than anything, but it works well for what I use it for. Uh, you can go underwater with it, which is cool. So if I ever want to do a cover underwater, this is the guy. Um, but anyway, those are that's it for cameras. So a lot of people have asked how I record these videos uh, and whether or not I use you know, an, an amplifier with my guitar or whether or not I use monitors, like external monitors and speakers and that. What I actually use is a wireless in-ear monitoring system. This is a Sennheiser EW300. This is just a great quality unit. Uh, again, it is a little bit pricier than, you know, some say a wired unit, but I hate cables, so <laughs> that's kind of why I, uh, you know, made the jump to this guy. In all honesty, I would suggest not using an amp or an external speaker system to monitor what you're recording because you're gonna, you know, run into issues with phase, you're gonna run into issues with feedback, uh, run into issues with just a muddy signal. If you are planning on doing something similar to this, doing, doing these covers and doing them live and not doing any uh, post-production afterwards, I would suggest get something like, not necessarily a wireless unit, you can get a wired unit for much cheaper. So I would go either a wireless or a wired in-ear monitoring system 
or just get you know headphones that you can plug right into your uh, into your interface so that you can monitor that way as well, which is you know the, probably the cheapest route in the end. For my computer, I actually use this uh, iMac behind me here. And for my digital audio workstation, I use uh, Pro Tools. And I have it hooked up to a DigiDesign 002 as my interface. I use an old version of Pro Tools. I believe it's Pro Tools 7.4, which came out circa 2007, 2008. But uh, I never really found that many limitations with it, at least for what I'm doing. That's why I've kind of never really upgraded. Uh, you know, perhaps in the future, I'll, I'll feel the need. But as of right now, I'm, I've just kind of st stuck with that over the years because Again, it does everything that I need it to do. And as far as whether or not you get Pro Tools or Cubase or Logic or you know GarageBand, it's, it's kind of personal preference in the end. I mean, they're all relatively gonna do the same thing. Uh, they just do things in a different way. Uh, you gotta kind of make up your own opinion of that and find out you know, what one, either if you're more familiar with one other than the other, or you know, you just personally like the way you know, one does something other than, rather than the other. Uh, that's just personal preference. It's the same with Mac or PC. Uh, people ask, you know, what's better, Mac or PC? Well, it's, you know, it's an endless argument uh, back and forth and, and nobody's gonna win. It's the same argument as digital versus analog. I mean, it can go on for days of, of what's better or what's worse. In the end, uh, things like that are just personal opinions. The reason I go Mac, I'm used to Mac, I like Mac. That's why I'm using that. Uh, you know, I know lots of people that use PC are, are extremely happy with that. Again, you know, go out there, test some things out, see what you enjoy best, and, and go from there. Anyway guys, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned something. If you have any more questions, please post them in the comments below. Remember to give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again guys, and I'll see you next time.